welcome back so it's been like 10 minutes since the last episode um i went to just kind of let the game run and do some stuff so i can make some money and kind of look at some aesthetic stuff and instantly the filters broke again so i said screw it we're getting in here and i am making this thing auto repair the filters right now so i gotta remember how to do this but i've got kind of two ways i want to go about it basically what i need is i need a durability reader for each filter and then normally you can do it where like it'll be one filter will trigger the repair of all five which is fine except for these seem to repair our um they just need to break at way different speeds now i don't know if that's always been a thing or if that's kind of new but what i might do is i might trigger them each individually it's more work and it's more of a waste of resources but i think it's necessary i'm gonna set it up for all like just for one to start like one trigger but i'm gonna prepare to do it all so we'll kind of go through this but what i need is i need at least six of these i think uh i want one for each one for each filter and then one to be like my like the set uh number for when we trigger it so let's see that's six there five of these I only need, uh, was it A and B equals, I think. I need one of those for now. We're probably gonna need a lot more. Uh, and then I just need a bunch of this stuff. Okay, so I got a whole bunch of stuff here. So if I take one of these durability readers and I put it on this side, we'll put it right there. And then if I grab one of these, put it on the end, okay. And one of these hook things, the, the durability, like the readers, the numbers. So this is going to tell me that that's at 95 durability. But yet, this one, uh, that one is broken. So we could trigger everything that off of this one. If it breaks, it'll be the first one to break almost always. But if that one breaks and this one's at 95, I mean, that's a waste of a spanner every time. And I bet you each of these are different. So we're going to test them all because I want to see like the actual number difference of them. And then I think we're going to trigger these individually. It might be stupid, but I think it's, I actually think it's smarter. You know, in my mind, it's smarter. So 95, 85, 75, 22, and zero. So if we trigger this now, I mean, this one's worth it to repair, but the other three are not. So it'd be a real waste. Also, this zapping noise is super annoying. Yeah, so I think my plan is going to be repair these things individually because it might be stupid long term but i think it's just smarter uh what i'm gonna need though is i'm gonna need more of these a b equals things we're going to need the actual spanner thing uh the repair because i didn't buy one because i are by, by five because i didn't think about it we'll also need a few more of these hooks and a lot more connection pieces huh? i think huh? so it looks stupid but this should work uh basically what i've done here is it just loops around reads the durability there obviously this one's broken it's at zero then we have the a and b equals right so if a or b once the sides equal it'll send a signal this way to trigger this right so i set this for 10 so that way once it gets to 10 percent that's when it's gonna go we could change it to five or one or whatever but i don't want it to go to zero i don't know why it's just a just a thing so now if i take this and i just walk into that it should have done something it didn't I probably need to trigger it somehow. It just wasted all of them. Okay, so that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, did it repair it? It didn't even repair it. Yo, let's try this again. I think maybe it has to be pointed directly at the filter. Uh, can I? Really, you can't put a single spanner in this thing? Really? Oh, okay, it did go. Okay, so now if I do it, if I put it to zero, does it, does it work? Okay, so now it's at 100. Yeah, so it looks like it has to be pointed directly at the filter, which is super weird because it reads it like just from the pipe, but it has to repair directly to it, I guess. Kind of strange. So the other thing I'm thinking is I might route this stuff underneath. That way it doesn't look so terrible like this. I think I can do this underneath. Let's try something. Where's my rake? 
So it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. And what I might do is actually lower all this like down one more, maybe two more into the ground. We don't need it to be this high, but I'm kind of like envisioning this to be like an industrial catwalk, right? With all the controls up top here. The one thing I'm not sure about is if these displays are necessary now that we have the dial pads or if the pads are necessary now that displays are set. I don't know, but it looks kind of cool like this. The only thing we're gonna have problems with is loading these things, right? So you have to walk on this to like actually put the, the spanner things in there. But I'm kind of wondering if there's a way we can make this automatic in the future, maybe like magnets, like a conveyor underneath something that pulls, like a magnet pulls it up when it needs it. I don't know, because we're gonna run out of a lot of the stuff really fast, but like basically huh? I can just drop on this, right? Take, yeah, I didn't want to do that. As you go into these, you just huh? drop it, huh? I think. Huh? No. Huh? Do I actually have to fall on it? Huh? Ooh, this is actually more annoying than I thought it was going to be. Like, I do it that way, but I have to, like, just jump in between them to get there, I guess. Hmm. We'll have to find a better way to do that. So this might be a waste, but uh, for the $2,400 this thing cost, we're going to buy the bulldozer. I think um, if it's kind of like the uh, one in like the other, like the main game, it's really easy to mess up if you hit a rut or something and like dig too far down. So I'm hoping this doesn't do that, but I'm hoping I can like smooth out the top of our, our, um, our claim without making too much of a mess. We're going to see, but it's going to take me like an hour to get home apparently because this thing is incredibly slow. I really should buy that big, uh, the big picker truck because that would make this a lot faster, I bet. So before I start leveling my ground here, I want to double check this and you can see this one repaired and is actually back down to 50% again. That one's about to break uh, and this one's also about to break. So it's this one's actually used two already. So like they're not, they're breaking out weird, weird uh, like intervals. I don't know why that is, but this should keep it running for a while. I did buy a whole bunch more, but they're on my truck on the boat a million miles that way. So yeah. Uh, the other thing too, I know people are going to ask why I went this route instead of like, you could get rid of this whole system up here and just put a flip flop hook in here. And the only reason I don't do that is because I don't like these things like getting to zero and then repairing. I don't know why it's just a preference thing. I prefer them to get to like five or 10% and then repair just that way they never hit zero. And that's the only reason for it. It's a bit more costly, a bit more ugly, but I think it's, uh, I think it makes more sense personally. So that's why anyways, let's level some ground. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make a mess of this. In the main game, the, the bulldozer over there, I always find like if you hit a rut, like if you start like this, it's gonna like not be where you want it. So I'm hoping this kind of works. So if I lower this, what does it do? Okay. As long as we stay on this level, that's all I want. Just don't dig down. My concern is that yeah, it's gonna dig down. It's like, this is too high. Uh, but my concern is that we're gonna actually like plow like deep in the ground and I don't want that. All right, so far so good. Yeah, like that, see? Now we've dug down a little bit and this whole thing is not gonna be lower. I'm gonna have to lower all this. Uh, now that I've lowered this whole thing, oh, I missed a chunk, damn it. I missed that, I didn't mean to, I'll come back. Um, so I have this whole thing lower, we're nice and flat. I did mess this part up and I know why now. It's when you reverse, it's like where your back tires are, is kind of the level you use. And I reversed into a hole and then, yeah, I made this mess. So I'm gonna fix that and then we'll have this whole thing like nice and smooth at the same level. And this should be good to start building our workshop and our house and all that stuff. But I'm gonna maybe, mess with this a little bit because I don't like how high this is now. So it's been a few hours and quite honestly, nothing really has changed. Uh, I gave up on this a long time ago. This was getting really annoying trying to fill this. So I kind of walked away from it for a bit and I've actually been trying to figure out what I want to do to like bring everything up here for like our crafting area. And quite honestly, I'm overthinking it and it just made me not do anything and just sit here and stare for a while. So I have a new plan. Um, first though, I did relocate all this stuff down like two blocks and I'm not super happy with it just because I still have to jump up here and it's not, it doesn't look as good as I want it to. Uh, I have like a vision in my mind and this just, it doesn't quite fit it and I, I don't know why. Um, but I bought an absolute ton of materials here. 
so we've got all kinds of stuff i've got piping i've got uh conveyors and stuff i did sell our oh i think i lost it right there i did sell our gold that we had and we had like a hundred and thirty thousand dollar bar so i got rid of that so we have lots of money now um i've also bought a couple more of the hydraulic smelter things and we're gonna use those but first before i do anything else uh, i had a comment in the comment section about the tank and if we put a second one of those lava thaw modules on will we be able to go deeper and honestly i don't know so i uh i want to run there now and i want to try and nope it doesn't look like we can buy a second one obviously it's locked out here but that does mean we should look at the tier three shop and see if it's there tier three is only 2400 we've got lots of money i'm not too worried about that so tier three requires hardstone core stone and cloudium we i'm positive we probably have most of this if not all of it we have about oh we got 60 626 uh core stone and how much cloudium do we have 550 so we have lots of that uh this i think we needed 5400 so we're exactly there oh i have to turn this on don't i i have it off right now because our gem situation is getting a little bit out of control uh, I'm worried about the lag of this. I mean, it's not crazy at the moment, but we are getting quite a bit of gems. And I, I'm just worried about dumping all those and then having the game crash or something. So something else I was looking at, this water tank does not need to be up here, I don't think. So see how this thing is shooting out like the bars of ice right there? If we go down, and if we watch here, every now and then these things will shoot out a bar of ice as well. If we put a filter, one of those things there, somewhere here and we filter this bar off and put the water tank down here to convert it to water for like our our uh, bears maybe we don't need all this extra piping that's here and maybe that would help with pressure so i'm thinking about maybe we try to move that down here or wherever we put that because that will give us an actually another drill down here and then as long as this produces ice every once in a while which does seem to happen often enough except for now that i'm watching it it's not happening at all like, like at all literally none okay maybe this is a bad idea <laughs> up top it happens all the time and i thought it happened more often down here maybe that's a bad idea there's one yeah we'll, that might be a bad idea we'll, we'll see uh i put my hardstone in here somewhere and i didn't think about it and now it's buried there it is right there i think we have enough all right so tier three so there's the next lava thaw booster i mean for 180 tokens do i have it uh tokens are in here somewhere i swear we got 2,000 tokens so i can i might, we might as well buy it and just move everything down right uh, we also have a new pick for 120 to 370 the prospecting helmet which finds nearby ore veins and i really don't know about those because like i mean we already have 120 gold our coins like we don't need money really long term right that's another drill we should buy that as well and we could you know we could start nuking the ground and really get stuff cleared out but why would this specify that it only functions at tier one, two, and three? Is there a fourth tier? Like I know there's no more shops, but why would it specify that it only functions at one, two, and three? If that's, would it just say it functions everywhere? So honestly, I wasn't really planning on trying this today, but maybe it's just what we should do, right? Move everything down before I actually build it. I don't know. I like kind of how this is set up and I don't know if I want to do like, remove all this move it down or just add from this and we'll, we'll figure it out but let's um let's clear some of this out real quick i'm gonna make this area bigger and then we'll we'll go down from here and by bigger i mean we're at the edge so this is as big as it gets oh we are like at a weird spot on the edge here so I'm kind of concerned because this actually isn't that much farther and this seems to be the bottom of this claim. I wonder if we need to go to a different claim to get like different ground than this. Um, because like it doesn't seem very far, like very deep. 
maybe that's a big enough difference, but I, I can't imagine that it is. I guess... I guess that was tier one right there. It just doesn't seem like a very big difference to me. Um, what I am going to do, though, is we're going to leave this stuff here. And I might pipe, like, one or two uh, drills down there just to see the difference. But what we'll do is we'll actually have this, like, in stages. So we'll have, you know, the tier two stage. It can go tier three up. That way we can just, like, build from here. So what I was saying before is I have been overthinking this. And part of the reason for that is I want to figure out exactly where up top I want this to go. But I was thinking, like, I need to plan it as if it's a permanent thing, and that's not how I should do it. What I need to do is just put the conveyors here, uh, expand this out where it needs to be, and then run everything up to the top, and then kind of figure out where I want it from there. So I am going to do that now. I'm probably going to annoy a whole bunch of people here because I am the most indecisive person in the world. But I actually decided to build our workshop down here for now. And honestly, it, it can't stay and it has to go because it defeats the purpose of everything I was trying to do. But I don't care. I've built it down here for now and we're going to use it. So what I've kind of done is just obviously just added the edge here. Um, so we go over to our gem compressors, which need to be hooked up yet. They're not hooked up to lava yet. Um, I also need another, another switch here. But then I also put the rest of these in. So we have all five of our smelters. And again, the whole point of this was that we could actually have like a lag free system. So these would come across and then we would hit the button like upstairs and this here would come out on the conveyor and then go like up, right? But for now, what I've kind of done is I think what we might do is take this compressor over, our compressor, the conveyor over to here and then attach it to a, what is this thing called? The saw hook, right? So if I do a saw hook, I can't show you, but if I set it like this, for instance, it'll spit out a cut piece out the back and then whatever it gets cut here will come this way. So if I program this to be like a hundred weight of gold, right? What I want it to do is I want to press the button, have gold come around the conveyor, get cut, the hundred weight sit here for me to use, and the other piece to go back around and then join the system again over here somewhere. I'm thinking we just go around the back here, join the system again, and then go back into here. Now, the only thing is, I think that doing a double filter like this, it seems to work, but at the same time, I don't know that it works. Um, so this could be stupid and might not work at all anyways. But I also think doing it this way is gonna be very slow because I'm gonna have to wait for, you know, the gold to go all the way around, cut, go back around, then I have to hit it again to get the next piece around, right? So I think it's gonna be too slow. I will be able to just like take it, and dump it on the conveyor and then have the excess piece go back around. So it, it's gonna be kind of manual as well, but I think it's gonna be very slow, um, especially if I do gems, cause gems are gonna go back around, up and then back over to be recompressed. So I'm gonna build it, but I think it's, stupid and a waste of time <laughs> to be totally honest so it's definitely not lost on me that like i said this is probably <laughs> completely a waste of time but it's gonna look cool and it's a cool proof of concept if this works so we're all set up i'm ready to turn this thing on basically what we've done is i've taken this piece out because this doesn't need to be like cut right we can program what we want here already so these will go well i'm trying this out because um i think when these land if i do this when it lands, it lands kind of awkward. And I think if I put one of these, it'll kind of land better. And we might need to do that on all of them. So we're going to test this. But basically, the conveyor comes around, it goes up, and it goes into the slicing machine here. Now, I do think when it spits it out, it's probably going to hit this. So I'll probably have to lower it back down. I just like the idea of it coming, like, being higher. So it's more of like a, you know, a working bench type thing. More realistic than in the ground, I guess. But anyways... It's going to come out here. One piece will go this way, and the other piece is going to go down. The only problem I'm thinking is the piece that drops off, I'm hoping, is like the excess, and the piece that comes through is the number we program. Otherwise, this is completely useless. But then it goes around, it goes underneath here, and it'll come up on the other side and go back in here, right? So it comes up, and then it'll go there and join this again. I'm hoping this will work. So, uh, I guess let's turn it on and see how badly I broke this stuff. So far, so good. We haven't broke our main conveyor yet. So if I, let's just put this at like 10. And 
and then if I press this, this is where I think it's. Oh, that's not cool. If it when it pops out, it not. Oh, that's not cool at all. Hmm. I don't like that when it pops out that this is uh, blocks it, which means we'll have to put a delay in there probably. Okay, so this should come through, and I'm hoping this cuts a block of about ten. Okay, well, that's not working there. But, is this the 10? This is not the 10. Oh, okay. So, somehow, I have to change these around. All right, let's try this one more time. So, I've just changed this so it comes forward and then through this way now. So, the excess of whatever five is going to kick out this way and land here. And everything extra is going to go off the edge of this, off the back. It's kind of janky because... Uh, there's no way to make one of these like upward like these conveyors go down which I find very strange um, And I wish it was there. So that should work. Perfect. This is our five weight. That's a four piece I need to like nail all this stuff down Obviously, this is our five perfect and then the only thing I have to worry about now is if this works So as long as this actual double filter thing works, we should be fine Perfect. Uh, I really don't like that though when I'm pick, uh, taking one of these out, if a piece is falling in there, it's making a mess. So, God, and I'm making a mess picking up the floors. So we have to really figure that out because I don't really know how to do this other than when I press a button, it puts like a stop on, like a delay on here. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Well, it's been a few minutes now. So far, so good. Everything seems to be running. I did, however, run back to town and uh, in the tier three shop we made, I just realized there is no more um, drills. So the drills that are in tier two are the highest level ones. So we have these ones, then we have the heavy ones. And I don't know what the difference is, like, cause these ones are, they seem to be able to go to any level. So I'm not 100% sure on that. But regardless, next episode we'll start looking at that um, so we can get some better drills going and just more of them. This five is just not enough. We need, you know, I want like 30. So this is producing quite a bit. But um, in order to do that, we're gonna need tokens. So I figured, you know what? Let's test it here on this one that's worth 2,500 and just see how good our crafting thing is. So this is at 20, this is Cloudium, which I really need to like label these somehow so I know which ones are which. So that's 20 Cloudium. I'm gonna need 196 Ruby, which is this one. I need to put some floors here. So this is 273, so we have more than enough. So what was it? 196. Let's just do 197 to be on the safe side. Drop you there. And 253 iron. Again, I'll just do 254. And oh, the one I don't have, I don't have an end. I definitely need to get some more light down here. It's a little bit too dark, but now that I have an anvil, we should be able to actually use our crafting area the way it's meant to be used and if i put this here we should be able to get huh? nope we should be able to get a pretty solid necklace worth 2500 tokens uh i think it's very over engineered and completely unnecessary but uh i think we could definitely use this as a cool concept in the future i like that i can just hit the button and like walk away like, you know like i oh i forgot to get something press the number here hit the button and it all goes back and it's all good to go we don't have any worries i do have to worry uh, a little bit about the things coming down like when i press the button here uh, the these chunks not going in so we are going to make a little bit of a mess after a while but i don't think it's going to matter for today so i figure if i'm going to keep changing my ideas on you guys i should at least like make it look cool and make it like permanent in here so at least it's at least it's done so what i did is i actually started making this into a little more of like a an actual mine it came out a little more like dwarven than i wanted but it's uh it's definitely permanent now i guess you could say so what i've done is i just added a whole bunch of stone here to make this like kind of gate thing as if we're holding up uh you know stone that we're digging out so the only thing that sucks is like trying to make this top area like more interesting because it's very flat and this game doesn't have any like half blocks so it's really hard to make this like more interesting you can use the pillars turn sideways to do like edging and stuff and then i can put some stuff on top of here but it, it's still a little tricky to do 
so i haven't done a lot with that yet um but down here what i did is i started breaking up the walls so i have floor walls here this is a reverse like a wall flipped around so it, it kind of just breaks it up so it's not just a straight wall like straight stone that gets really boring really fast and then i also did the roof a little bit just kind of messed it up i broke this so it looks like there's you know it's it's not brand new and pristine it's been here for a while like we, we finally opened the cave whatever you know I'm trying to tell the story one thing i have to do though is I'm, i've been adding snow into certain spots and like parts like here where's my shovel right there so parts like that basically all i gotta do is if i dig from here it's fine because i can come back and use the rake just to level this back out and then you get like infinite snow and i'm just trying to make like drifts in certain spots so it kind of like just adds to this a little bit and fills you know makes it look like it's been here for a while and then it's not just flat and pristine right um same thing here just some broken walls i started adding some lights in here now these lights don't go anywhere like this one i have to fix actually I put a, uh, a corner on here so they don't go anywhere they don't do anything basically all you do is put a, a switch on the end turn it on and then remove it and they just stay on permanently but i wanted it to look like the wires actually go into the wall and are actually doing something here um, and then I couldn't figure out how to fix this floor part and I was really sick of like shoveling snow to make it flat So I just started using some floor like wooden floors and some tin sheets and just breaking it up So it's a it's a temporary, you know driveway. Oops. We got the little uh, save there Um, so it's like a temporary driveway, right? Now over here. I started just adding some little details just a little storage area You always find on mines. There's just like, you know random storage stuff kicking everywhere so I started just putting a bunch of our junk here and kind of organizing it so it's like organized chaos. Again, just to kind of tell the story of what we're doing. And then we started putting some pillars in the top here to like support the roof. Same thing with some lights. Um, this line here, I actually added in and this is going to actually turn the system on now. So it goes up and just change, uh, turns a, uh, a valve, turns everything on. And then in here, I just completed this a little bit, you know, just added some edges here made the walkway look a little bit more finished and then put some pillars and some lights. Same thing with these lights. They don't go anywhere. They're just into the ceiling. These are actually just a light that I put a switch on and then reburied. And then I took some snow and just kind of refilled it around. So it kind of gives that like that look of they're just barely sticking out of the snow. So that's kind of where I'm at for now. This took a lot longer than I wanted it to. And there's so many materials. I actually think I spent about I spent close to 30,000 on doing this and these things are like they're not expensive but I bought so many of these I mean this here alone is what one two three four five six seven eight nine it's like 10 pillar pieces for that alone which is super annoying when you have to lift them up one at a time buy them put them in the truck it took forever uh anyways guys I hope you enjoy this idea I hope you enjoy the concept um if you hit that like button if you want to see more if you have any suggestions on what I should do to continue this, we're obviously going to build this like out this way next episode and kind of figure that out. Um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, I'll see you next time.